deepfakes are synthetic media, basically. Uh, deepfakes are pieces of content, can be video, can be audio, but it can also be text or images that have been created using artificial intelligence and specifically deep learning algorithms. They differ from the traditional imagery, like Photoshop, for instance, in the fact that a computer does everything in this equation. There is no human involved in creating all that synthetic content. If you do it with Photoshop, it's a person doing it. So there's a big difference. And the second difference is that what you see is that the automation behind deep learning makes it that it's far more believable than a still image like you can create with Photoshop. Well, basically, that's it. It's all in the world. It's a scam. The target of deep fakes is basically to manipulate people into doing something. They're a tool. And in, if you look at the malicious way of using the bad way of using it, um, it is basically a tool to do social engineering with, to manipulate people into doing something that you want. But there's also positive notes on uh, deep fakes as well. You can use it, for instance, for learning, to create videos that people uh, can watch to learn something that are being directed by people or actors that people understand and know. Therefore, the learning material sticks better because they're already familiar with people in the video. Well, it's a good question to ask how people can, can definitely defend themselves because um, it's difficult to do. First of all, what we see is that if you look at the maturity level, the understanding of the fact that deepfakes even exist, we're not there yet. A lot of people simply don't know about deepfakes. So step one would be tell them, let them know what deepfakes are, make sure that they understand um, what deepfakes can do and the, the wide range of applications that deepfakes have. And then secondly, give them the skills to make sure that they can recognize deepfakes because that's the hard part. Good deepfakes are really hard to detect, are really hard to, to figure out. Audio deepfakes, if you look at incidents that we've had in, in real world where uh, there was an energy firm where the CEO of that firm got a call from his CEO at the parent company and the voice of that person, the voice of that CEO that they spoofed, that they faked basically, was absolutely real, including all of the German accents. In this case, it was a German parent company. So it was really convincing. And the thing that you have to watch out for with deepfakes is one, look for faults in the production, either clicks in the audio, blurry images, um, things that make you feel like hey, this might not be fully real, be alert. Second thing what you need to watch out for is, is it normal that someone at this time would ask me a question like that? Because that's usually what happens is if you get a deep fake audio, for instance, they'll ask you to wire transfer some money, for instance. Well, is that normal behavior? That's the sort of thing you need to look out for. Simply use common sense and be aware of the fact that they can now use tools like that to spoof you, to scam you. Well, a lot of governments are trying to put regulations in place, um, although it's, it's, it's somewhat overshadowed by things that have more direct impact like ransomware, for instance. So there's a lot of focus on from, from government entities to do something about ransomware and less about deep fakes. But there are countries out there that have a very big education plan in place, like for instance, Finland or Estonia, where they have active components in the teaching where kids get taught about things like deep fakes. But there's also a lot of different groups and uh, collaborating um, organizations out there, things like uh, COCSEC. The COCSEC collaboration basically helps you bootstrap organizations to work against deep fakes. And there's also uh, something like the C2PA. The C2PA is the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authentication. Oh no, Authenticity, sorry. But that's ARM, uh, Intel, Adobe, Microsoft, BBC, Twitter, band together as organizations, as commercial organizations. And they want to basically trace the creation of audio of material content that's been created so that he can digitally sign off on it and make it traceable. So those are things that are happening. We are looking at how can we get more control over media and make sure that it's not a deep fake, it's not being used for disinformation, et cetera, et cetera. 
there are definitely positive applications of deepfake technology. I already mentioned that you can do it education, create videos. Think about Hollywood. If they have to redo a take, they don't have to fly in the actor again. They can use a deepfake generated image of that actor to do the scene again. That simply saves money. There's other things as well that you can do with deep fakes. You can bring back loved ones that have uh, passed away, unfortunately. So that will help you in creating that emotional bond and, and maybe saying goodbye to that person. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do because you're recreating reality. So there's hardly any limits other than it's not tangible. You can't touch the person. It's not a hologram or anything like that, but it goes very, very far. And it can definitely be used to guide people as well, uh, meaning uh, you can use it to, um, as, a, as a bank, for instance, you can use it to create a video on how to use the bank teller or how to use a website. There's just plenty of applications for deep fakes that have good intentions. So the deep fake technology will keep evolving and be more accessible to people. It's already fairly easy to go on GitHub and download software, which allows you to create a deep fake on of your own within hours. And then as long as you add compute power and add new or more time to build that deep fake, it becomes more convincing. Same with voice. Um, there's technology out there where you just, they need a couple of lines a voice from you, recorded voice, and they can recreate your voice. There's tools like Deepfakes Live, for instance, which is a tool you can download and you can ingest a deepfake into a Zoom call or in a Teams call, in a live call, and it's real time already. So the one thing that will happen is that technology will become even more accessible to people. It will be integrated into consumer hardware and software. Your phone will be powerful enough to create a deepfake, for instance. And um, that's a good thing on the one hand. On the other hand, with anything like power, power like that comes responsibility. And that's why we do interviews like these is to make sure that people understand that they have to dive into deep fakes, have to understand what they are in order to use them responsibly. Thank you.